Hey, welcome back to another video. Today's topic is the games that the narcissist will play. One of the things that uh, I, I see a lot, and I know I struggle with this myself, and, and this is kind of a pet peeve of mine now, is playing games. And, and especially emotionally manipulative, narcissistic games. And it, it's one of those things where in the beginning, you don't really realize it. It's just part of uh, the environment that you're used to. Um, it's just the way things are. But uh, but you will find yourself constantly engaging in these situations or playing these stupid freaking games that mean nothing. And all it does is keep you keep you tied to to the situation. It keeps you emotionally connected to them, and it's really. It's, it's really pointless. Now, I understand that in the beginning parts of this, after you've been gas, gaslitted, lighted, gaslighted, <laughs> and provoked, you know, and just messed with, it, it's hard to, to, to step away from that uh, back and forth. And I, and I think it boils into a couple of different, boils down to a couple of different issues. And, and, the first one is is that you 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 don't even realize that you're having to engage or that you are engaging, and then what happens is is you realize that it's just pointless that that playing this game doesn't accomplish anything for you. All it does is give them supply, and you know <clears throat> part of the problem is people need to be able to communicate. Playing manipulative, manipulative games and not clearly communicating what the hell is going on is a problem. You need to be able to sit down and have a conversation. Now, I understand that, that a lot of people, you know, maybe they feel uncomfortable with it. And it's like, well, I don't really want to say what I want because I'm embarrassed or, or I'm afraid of the reactions. So I'll play this stupid little game where I'm hinting around it and I'm dancing around the topic and I won't really say what the issue is because that'll, you know, they'll just figure it out and they'll know. You know what? When the hell does that ever work out? The problem is, is with a narcissistic person, they only want to operate in that crazy state of manipulation. And there's no way around it. You can't sit down and have a conversation with them and say, look, this is ridiculous. You know, let's let's uh let's have a conversation you ultimately have to decide what do you want in your life how do you want your life to go forward do you want it to continue to be this crazy chaotic situation or do you want it to be different now i would say most of us logically would say we don't want that but i would also say that a lot of us have spent many years maybe even decades depending on your age Engaging in this type of back and, back and forth behavior to where it almost feels normal. Now, the other issue with this, when you start to realize that uh, maybe somebody is not really a positive influence in your life, it can be really hard to let that person go. Because, and you can get to the point that that's the only thing you have left is that argument, is that interaction, is that negative interaction. So I would say, you know, like you have the situation when you're with a person and then you have the situation when you're breaking apart and you probably know that you both need to go your separate ways, but you don't want to let it go. You don't want to let this person go because, well, if you let them go, then they're gone. They won't, you know, then there's no chance of them ever coming back. There's no chance of interaction. So you can get caught in this state or this stage to where you feel like, well, at least if I'm lashing out, there's still a connection. At least if, you know, they're still lashing out at me, that means they're still thinking about me. And it's a, it's kind of a really desperate situation to be in, a desperate mode to be in when you when you fall into that trap because nothing good comes from it. And I see this a lot. I see this a lot with people who are so connected or they don't want to lose that last little bit of connection and they're holding on to every little 
just ounce of hope. It goes from the hope of maybe something will change to just not even wanting to let it go. Well, at least, at least if I don't let this person go or I don't go no contact, they'll, they're still a part of my life. I still get to think about them. I still get to, to engage. <clears throat> I'd like to say that that was not my case, that I, you know, I was strong and, and, uh, observant and that whenever my situation was just crumbling and falling apart, that I was like, oh hell, this is a nightmare. I'm out, you know, peace out and <laughs> not so much. It was really tough. And a lot of the stuff I'm talking a lot of the stuff I'm talking about and I see with other people, I absolutely can relate with. I have a lot of empathy for these people because it, I remember the struggle I went through. It it wasn't easy. God, I wish it was. I wish I could have been one of those people who just like, oh wow, you know what? This is toxic. This was a big lie. I'm out of here and, you know, just bla trailblazing to a new life, just happy with everything that's going on. I mean, that would be awesome. The reality is that's not what happened. It was a gut-wrenching experience. Even if, you know what, even if I wouldn't have had kids, it would have been tough. Now, granted, it wouldn't have been as long. You know, kids keep a connection to it, but it was, it, I still think it would have been really tough. We get into these situations to where, you know, we really give ourselves to the, to our partner, to our spouse. And when you realize that it was basically all based on a lie, that there was no foundation for this relationship, it was all, you know, narcissism and self-interest and games and all those things, it, it just makes it incredibly tough. The thing is, is that you can't start to get your life back until you start to let that go. Until you realize that those games aren't worth playing anymore. That, that being in a situation to where you're always guessing and you're always unsure what's going on is not a healthy relationship. You know, I've, I've been seeing a lot of memes lately that, um, <clears throat> you know, say things along the lines of if, you know, if you're, if you're loved, you know it. And if you're, and if you're questioning it, then you're not. And I think that's really true, right? I mean, if you feel comfortable with somebody, then, and, and you don't feel confused, you don't feel conflicted you don't feel like you're walking on eggshells, then you know it's a real relationship. But if you have all those other things going on, there's something fundamentally wrong with that. And st staying in that situation is just... How, how, what, what, let me see. I'm trying to think of the best way to put it. It, 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 it would be like being in a... A loaded train car, like a subway car. Let's say you're in a, in a subway car and it's just a ton of people, smells bad, you know, whatever. And you're in there and you're like, oh man, this sucks, but you know, I'm here. I'll just deal with it. And then like three feet to your left is the door to the other car and you look through the window and there's nobody in there. Lights are all on. Everything looks nice and bright and clean. All you have to do is get up, walk over, and go into the other thing. Leave this part of your, you know, leave it. Just say, okay, I've done this. I've tried it. It's not getting any better. Things aren't getting, it's just, it's just muck. I deserve something different. It's amazing how difficult that is. If you are in a situation where you're constantly confused, where it doesn't make sense, that right there is your answer. That right there is telling you that something is, is wrong and that, it, and that you deserve better. You deserve better. You deserve an opportunity for that clean train car that's just three feet to the, to the left. I... I, I 
I wish it was that easy. I mean, I, I know it, it, I mean, the reality is, is that it really is that easy. And what happens is, is once you walk through it and you get over there, except it's not that, right? It's like, you got to crawl through mud, you know, reach up for the door, Jimmy the lock to get through it. But then when you're on the other side of it, you're like, holy crap, my God, why didn't I do that sooner? It's just, I don't know. It's really tough. And I get it. I understand it. I understand people who are having that struggle because it's real. A lot of people don't understand it. Other people you talk to, friends can be like, well, they were, you know, your ex was a butthead. They were bad. You should be happy. Yeah, we all should be. Doesn't It's not that easy because we're emotionally connected. We're emotionally bonded to the person. We've given a little piece or a big piece of ourselves to this other person. And for the most part, most of the time, it's like they just reach in, <laughs> rip out your heart, throw it on the ground, jump up and down on it, you know, bite into it and then laugh at you. And you're like, what? And it that's what makes it hard, right? That betrayal. It doesn't even have to be cheating. It doesn't, I mean, cheating is a betrayal too. But I mean, just the betrayal of your trust, of your love, of your attention is devastating or can be devastating on that. Hope that makes sense. Love to hear what you think about this. Hear your view on this. Maybe you're still stuck struggling with it. Hopefully not. And on that, I will talk to you on the next video. Take care. Bye.